Okay, uh, WestJet and Scotiabank. So my email is composed. It's going to both CEOs tonight, so they will get it on Friday morning, challenging both of them to put their money where their social media mouth is and start supporting the freedom movement financially. Okay, so whoever is interested in this, just follow the story. They could advertise on our media channels. They could pay for a new show or something like mine. They could host an event, okay? And some people may not want these companies involved, but I'm gonna go for it and see if they say yes. They could sponsor They could sponsor a, an amazing Canada Day, right? Canada Freedom Day, Freedom 2022, brought to you by WestJet. Why fucking not? That's what I say, right? It's time for corporate Canada to get out of the boardroom and into the streets with us. This is the new Canada. And if these, these guys don't figure it out, these CEOs and these lawyers and stuff, they don't get their shit together and figure it out. They're going to be left in the dust because we're building new industries, right? I was a part of a new freedom travel venture and it's working. And anybody who's not actively promoting freedom and speaking about it, they literally will be left behind. So I will share any uh, and respectfully I will share any correspondence I received back from these offices so this is the CEO of WestJet and his name is uh, I forget now it's it's complicated Alexis I think he's Dutch um, and he's new he was disappointed in December so he wasn't there at the beginning and then the CEO of Scotiabank and I don't think he's new at all and <laughs> Scotiabank I went into Scotiabank I don't like this bank at all no cash hassles, intimidation, but whatever. Open-minded, right? Stay open-minded. So Scotiabank has apologized to Benjamin Dichter and some other freedom leaders for basically stealing their money um, or like withholding it from them, which is kind of theft in my mind. And then WestJet is saying, okay, no more travel bans. Yeah, well, no more travel bans two years ago. And when WestJet was throwing that, when they threw that family off the plane with the child, that was WestJet, right? So let's explain that. Let's not just sweep it under the rug and say no more bans. I want the new CEO of WestJet, Alexis from Holland, to explain and apologize and compensate Canadians for those policies all of that year. Because it was people like me and you who were out there advocating for this, what they're advocating for now out of their CEO office with all their power and money. We were out there advocating and we were getting the crap beaten out of us, right? Nobody was helping us. Nobody from corporate Canada was helping us. No politicians, no MLAs, no premiers, nothing. And my story that you will read in Betrayed is that story and millions of us have that story. So look for that reply email. Um, hopefully something comes back from the CEO of WestJet and Scotiabank. Now, I'll just say finally one more thing about that. It's really important if you wanna advocate with Corporate Canada now or any time like this, you have gotta do it properly, right? You gotta dress properly, you gotta get into the room, you have to speak eloquently, you have to speak the language of, of proper, you know, high level finance and governance in Canada. You can't accept to be, you can't expect to be accepted if you don't behave in a way that is that is incredibly professional, okay? Now, I'm not saying that they did like an ethical or moral thing, but there is a level, and it's the, going to be the people who are advocating for freedom who can walk into the boardroom of like the Scotiabank and do a deal and say, you're going to apologize, you're going to compensate, you're going to make amends for the harm that you cause Canadians and walk out with a handshake deal. That Those are the new leaders of Canada, I would say. Um, and they and we come in all shapes and sizes and that's not for everybody absolutely that will be for some of us that's not for everybody but we need those advocates those professional advocates who can get in there and force the 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 high level powerful corporate people in our country to start coming to the table with freedom to protect us right because we've got a big big lucrative well-run country and we need those people protecting freedom with us okay pierre paul Avera, very exciting so i've talked about this for many uh, two, three years at least how to create laws so i went into my uh, MLA's office in Sitka, I want to, how do I create a law? <laughs> right? And I had known him for a long time. He's the Minister of Attorney General. Very quiet, wasn't helpful at all, basically. He was like, yes, no, are we done, goodbye. And I wanted to put a law into place to set up a vaccine, vaccine injury program in BC. And I was essentially blown off and everybody blew me off. Sonia Furtino blew me off, Horgan blew me off, or if he was in power, who was in power? Anyway, everybody blew me off. And I was like, man, is this disappointing? Um, but what I was told by David Ebby is the two different ways you create a law, and that's by initiating a bill, and I knew that part, into the House, so if it's federally, it's the House of Commons, and this is what Pierre has done. When a government MP initiates a federal law, it's called a government bill, 
And so a member of the sitting government, the cabinet, says this is going to be a liberal, like Trudeau's gun law or bill. Maybe it's not a law yet. I don't know. So that's a government-sponsored bill because the liberals are running the government. If Pierre, or when Pierre introduced this this week, it's called a private member's bill because he's not considered the government. He doesn't hold majority of the Conservative Party. So it goes into the House as a motion, a private member's bill. And everybody reads it and ratifies it. And if it's passed, then it becomes a law. Um, and that's how lawmaking works. And then the governor general has to, like, you know, bless it from the queen or whatever. Um, and so good for him. This is going to be protective measures law. This is what I call protective measures. So instead of running around and trying to pull down all the bad laws, which is what we have been doing, what Pierre is doing is really smart. And this is why we need people in, in these legislatures on our behalf. Sorry, it's finally actually getting hot here. I got to open the window. Is to set up just one law that would basically negate all the bad shit <laughs> because it's a protective measures law. So the actual name of it, um, I don't have, but it is essentially, it's a statute act. So it, it ends in the word act and it is essentially saying the prohibition of government mandated vaccines. That's the act. And I don't hold much hope that this will be voted for positively because look what 202 members of the House of Commons just did. They voted to like keep persecuting unvaccinated people. So I don't know how PR thinks this is going to pass. Hopefully it will because if it doesn't, then we have the majority of, of Canadian members of Parliament who are essentially you know, committing a form of manslaughter, even murder, even genocide, whatever, because they are now forcefully they are using threats and force to harm Canadians and we have evidence of this harm so good luck to Pierre please share the story please follow the story it's his private members bill that went into the as a motion into the House of Commons and the legislature yesterday I think or the day before to stop any form of treasonous uh, unlawful egregious harmful uh, any kind of mandates, policies, laws, whatever to do with forced injection in our country. And the great thing about it being a federal law is, like I said, it's like the house of cards. Everything gets negated, no matter what jurisdiction or what province is, because it becomes a federal law, nothing else becomes possible. So you don't want to just set the law up in BC because it wouldn't help the people in Newfoundland, that sort of thing. Okay, so private members, federal bill, Pierre Paul Lever, follow his story, it's probably on his channels.